Let's say you plug your soldering iron and wait for it to heat up, but no matter how many minutes you wait, it still doesn't melt your solder. It doesn't work anymore. So in this video, we're going to fix this soldering iron. So let's start fixing. So first, we need to unscrew and disassemble it, of course. If you don't see any problem on its connections, the problem will be its heating element. So just cut the two wires going to its element. But in my case, I just unplug it because it's unpluggable. Now, you unscrew its tip like this and you can see its ceramic element. So, to remove this, we will just pull it and there it is. So now, if we measure its resistance, we can't measure anything. So, it's now confirmed that this is the fault. So, what we can do now is to buy a soldering element like this. You can buy it online or in my case, just on my local electronics store. So I just bring it so I will know the right size to buy. So this is it. The soldering element is cheap. Now we will insert it back and also we will reconnect the leads. Also don't forget to insulate the naked connections so it will not explode in your hands while soldering. But before we put it back, let's take a resistance check again on its plug. So now, we have a reading of about 1800 ohms, which is good, so we can assemble it back together. But one last safety check guys, we will set the multimeter to 2000K or 2 mega ohms, and then connect the probe to the metal part of the soldering iron, and to either one of its plug terminals. We should not see any reading, so it's now safe. We do this to make sure we will not get electrocuted because this soldering iron, its metal part is not connected to ground, it's just floating. And also, time time it guys, because I'm curious on how long does it take for it to melt solder. A few moments later, we see that it takes 1 minute and 43 seconds on this type of soldering iron which is directly connected to mains. So, there we have it guys, it now works again. But I wonder what actually happened to the faulty element. So I crack it open, the bottom and the top part of it. So this is the actual filament. We can see it's made of a thin piece of wire. This should be a nichrome wire. Nichrome means nickel and chromium combined together. They use nichrome because it oxidizes or rusts slowly. It's like stainless steel, like your tablespoon and fork. So basically, its heating filament is a piece of long thin wire wounded inside a ceramic tube. So it will be insulated from the outside environment. But when we check its resistance, the nichrome wire is still intact up to this. We can see that it breaks on the topmost part. We can see that the actual fault is here, see it's burnt, so that is why it fails. But how long does this filament last? In my experience, the original filament came with this iron lasted for one year, and this chip replacement lasted about 7 months. If we measure the resistance of a fresh filament, it's 1822 ohms. So if we solve its power using V squared over R because we have 240 volts here, it equals to 31.6 watts. So by the way, this is a 30 watts soldering iron. And actually guys, I modified the soldering iron to control its temperature. When I press it, it will consume less current. And if we press it again, more current is, is consumed, so basically high and low temperature. So that's it guys, thank you for watching, if you like it, 
click the S button and notification bell if you want videos like this. Very good.